everybody, Todd Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Well, you have to figure since the start of October has recently come upon us here that we were going to eventually talk about the winter and that's exactly what this video is going to be. So let's talk about what we already know here. It's no secret that we're expecting the Nina winter. And what exactly does that mean, you ask? It's basically a situation in which you'll see the diagram here where we'll expect jet stream to be a little bit further to the north, so a little bit more in the way of active weather over towards the northeast. You can see it also indicated here on the seasonal temperature outlook. And also, you can expect warmer temperatures off to the south a little bit. There's going to be a little bit of a collision point between these two areas here, right over towards the Mississippi River Valley, especially as we get over towards the southern parts of the Ohio Valley, maybe even the southeast as well. Sometimes this point can be very hard to predict whenever we have these La Nina winters. Depending on how the jet stream tracks, we can have some pretty active weather throughout this time period here towards not just the northwest, but also the Ohio Valley and even the northeast as we go forward here. So it could be a mixed bag as to what we get here. Based off the precipitation outlook, though, you can tell that there's a higher probability of precipitation over towards Ohio and Indiana. You can also see the northeast coming into play and towards the deep south, which is a typical calling card as well as you saw in the diagram, that we can expect those below average chances of precip further off to the south here. Like I said, it really depends on how far this jet stream will dip south, but based off of the three month average, this is what we're going off of. Also, just a reminder, this is not gonna be symbolic of how every day is going to be this winter. This is just based off of a 90 day average in which there's a lot of wiggle room, a lot of room for things to change. So we'll keep that in mind here. Of course, we wouldn't have a seasonal outlook without taking a look at the Enzo chart here. And of course, like I said before, this is the prediction. Weak La Nina right here. We're just at the threshold here at a negative 0.5 degrees phase here over towards December, January, and February here. And that means, and, and that's gonna maintain itself just about until early spring, I would say at this point. So even into March, we'll have to keep an eye on that as we go forward here. So looking at the model data that we have available, we have a couple that we usually will look at. I only incorporate usually one of these per month, or I usually incorporate only one of these particular models per month. The CAN SIPS is because it only updates on the first of every month. So it makes things a little bit difficult in regards to its usage here. But CFS updates every day. And we're going to start out with that one. And you can see there's some cold air lingering around as we get into November. But as we go towards December, we it looks like we get into a really interesting phase here over the course of the month. We do have that cold air kind of set up more towards the north here, towards Canada. And we might be entering either a neutral or potentially a negative NAO or North Atlantic oscillation phase here. So do think this will help keep the northeast a bit cool here still looks like it might be slightly warmer than average there to start out possibly but as we continue to go on to the next month here we start to see that negative ao phase to go along with this now keep in mind there's still very much room for this there's still plenty of room for this to change very quickly but what i'm thinking is towards the north just like we saw on the chart here is where we're going to see the most activity in both regards to weather and just cold temperatures as a whole here I do wonder, depending on when we get those troughs in the jet stream here, as to whether or not we may have some chances for severe weather towards the deep south here. Like you saw in the diagram, the jet stream typically doesn't get too far to the south here. The polar jet usually stays further up to the north. The Pacific jet or subtropical jet will usually end up being a little further to the north too. So I do think fair weather is still going to be very much in the equation towards the deep south. But if we can get an outlier, things can get pretty interesting there. But as we go towards February here, we're starting to enter a positive phase towards the NAO and a neutral phase with the AO. So this cold air eventually is going to push its way to the south at some point throughout February here. But I don't think it's necessarily going to be a wild card month, I would say, at this current point in time. Keep in mind, we're looking months and months in advance. So this is, like I said, this is very much prone to changing, but based off of these first looks here, for a lot of us, it might be a relatively warm winter. So just something to keep an eye on here. Doesn't mean don't take out your sweaters and heavy coats. You're probably still gonna need them at times, but 
based off the averages that we're seeing over the course of the 90 day period, we're expecting a warmer and relatively drier winter from the looks of it right now. Let's go ahead and make our comparison here with the CANSIPS and CANSIPS of course looks a little bit different. We kind of stay in more of the uh, positive phase on both sides here. We look at the uh, NAO and the AO, it's looking positive. But interesting how quickly it shifts as we get into January here. We start to see more cold air available, maybe even thoughts of a polar vortex. Some kind of stratospheric heating could be coming into play here. I always like to look over here towards Alaska for a lot of things that tend to happen. Stratospheric heating, usually whenever it occurs, you would see it right around this region here that we're looking at now. I have it circled for you, by the way. And it's a pretty big area of it, so at some point we're going to have some of that cold air to rush in. I don't know how big of a blast that would be at this current point in time. It's very hard to tell, but it's definitely some a signal that kind of captures my eye here. Of course, as we go further along, that signal weakens along with this cold air signal as we get into February. We even look towards March here. Looks like we see a little bit of resurgence happen with it as well. So something else to so again, something else that I'm going to be keeping an extra close eye on. The next update, I probably will do one towards the end of the month, maybe the beginning of November. We'll see how this pans out from that point. So if we were to go ahead and see how this all looks on the temperature anomalies along with our precipitation anomalies here, we'll start with temps first here. You can see that for a large part of the country, we're above average. It's not a dramatic increase for most of us. Maybe out towards the Midwest is where we have the greatest difference even then, that's probably about 10 to 15 degrees above average. It's not going to be a winter of extremes from the looks of it right now. Now, as we go forward into January, we're still looking relatively above average across the board. It's really not until February where we start to see those well below average temperatures start to come into play. And even then, it looks like a lot of it stays either offshore or north of the border here. Looks like Canada is going to have a cooler winter more so than anyone else right now. Over towards the U.S. here, and this kind of piques my interest as well, seeing this uh, increased area of warm air over here towards the Midwest here and the Southern Plains. Could February be an interesting month for severe weather here? It really just depends on the troughing, how the jet stream behaves from that point. But I am interested in seeing how this turns out here. And then if we go towards March which is critical because that's when we make that shift from winter into spring, usually a pretty big severe season. This kind of piques my interest a little bit as well. Of course, like I said, these are really early signals, so I'm not gonna put a whole lot of merit into this, but just a, a few things to think about, a few things to keep an eye on as we go forward here, especially for me. I'm gonna be taking a lot of notes of this after the video, of course. But in any case though, let's go ahead and take a look at what our precipitation anomaly is looking like here. Like I said, with the jet stream, most likely going to be more over towards the northern states. So not really expecting a whole lot in the way of activity. I've always been kind of side eyeing December, though, even in the uh, early fall outlooks where we kind of took a sneak peek. I've been seeing a little bit of a signal here in regards to activity over towards the Mississippi River Valley and over towards the Ohio Valleys as well. And it, co it coincides very well with what we were seeing on the three month outlook as well. January looks like a pretty calm month unless you're over towards the western states. It's where the weather pattern seems to be the most active. And then towards February, kind of going along with what I was seeing there with the temperature outlook, seeing a little bit more in the way of activity towards the deep south here. The uh, plains look pretty dry, so I want to get my buddy Kyle here eventually and talk about this because this is an interesting signal here. Uh, be sure to tag Kyle in the comments, anybody. If you do know who I'm talking about, by the way, and then March over here, look at that. Another interesting signal right there, seeing that weather over towards the deep south. That coincides pretty well with what we would typically see, too. So I'm, I'm like I said, something I'm definitely going to be keeping an extra close eye on as we close in towards these time frames here towards February and March. Because it does seem like we've had a shift over the last few years where February and March in particular have been uh, very active months in regards to severe weather too still of course be on the watch for winter weather we'll be doing maybe a couple of winter weather streams as well depending on how significant the storm ends up being but of course we're still a long ways out from that point but in any case though 
I hope you guys found the video useful. If you did, you know what to do. Make sure you're crushing that like button, smashing that subscribe button, and obliterating the share button. We're on our way to 1100 here, and I appreciate everyone of you that has been along for the ride here, and hopefully here's to even more after that. But that being said, you guys take care and have a great rest of your Friday, and I will see you tomorrow.